I have animals in my stories. Um, I th sometimes think it's a bit of a habit, but there's a reason behind it going way, way back. I'm not that interested in animals themselves. You know, some of them I find very ugly and uh, aggressive and slimy or whatever, but it's because what interests me is how we get on with them and they get on with us. I am of the view that we're on this planet together, that we're all sentient creatures, we're all feeling creatures, um, and we inhabit this place together. Uh, and I mean together. It's not them and us. We are together. It just so happens we're very bright as a species and we've come to dominate this planet, which means that we use animals, use them up, we destroy them, we exploit them, we love them. The relationship between us and animals is, is very, very complex. And it's that that fascinates me. It's how we get on with them and they get on with us and how they affect our lives. And very often it's one little incident. Uh, so observing a child working on the farm where I live with a horse, for instance, has given me the inspiration for, for instance, war horse because I saw that there was a tenderness and a trust between horse and boy. And that convinces me this is not something sentimental, it's something that's real and interesting. And that's why you'll find animals in many of my stories. Well, my favorite animal would be an elephant, no question about that. Um, why? Because I read about elephants when I was very little and was read a very, very beautiful story. Uh, by Rudyard Kipling called The Elephant's Child. And my mum used to read that to me when I was very little and I've never, never forgotten it. And I think an elephant in my head will always be Rudyard Kipling's Elephant's Child, a little baby elephant, uh, growing up asking far too many questions and then gets in real trouble because makes the mistake of asking a crocodile uh, a question. And then when the crocodile says, come a little closer, dear, come a little closer, because I can't quite hear. The elephant goes a little closer, and in those days you probably don't know this, but elephants didn't have long, long trunks, they just had little stubby noses. And so this elephant, uh, little elephant, leans forward, and of course the crocodile grabs him by his little snout of a nose and pulls and pulls and pulls and pulls, which is why elephants have trunks today. You didn't know that, do you? David Attenborough never told you that, but it's true. I've always adored elephants. I think they've got extraordinary eyes. When I look into an elephant's eye, you can see so much wisdom about the world and about each other. I love the, their society, the way they relate to each other. And of course, there is this pitiful thing about what's happening to elephants at the moment, the way people are destroying them for their ivory, for their tusks. And that tears you apart inside to know that these wonderful giants of creation may not even be there for my great-grandchildren to see. Then they'll just be in pictures if we're not very careful. So I'm very... I'm very tender about them. I, I think they're wonderful animals. I've seen them in the flesh. I've been to Sri Lanka and walked amongst them, not too close, but, and I've looked up into their eyes and when they've been in zoos. Anyway, I just adore them. So I've written two books recently. One's called um, The Elephant in the Garden. And uh, I wrote that because I came across a true story of a lady in Belfast in the Second World War who worked in the zoo. And in order to save the elephant that she adored and had brought up uh, as a baby from uh, actually the possibility of being shot because the idea was that when the bombers came over in 1940s in the Second World War, the order went out at Belfast Zoo that they were going to shoot all the animals in the zoo that were a threat because if the bombs fell and the cages broke open, they could run into the town. So the order went out that when the bombers came, all the animals were going to be shot. And this wonderful lady said, well, you're not shooting my elephant. And the director of the zoo said, look, excuse me, you know, you go home at five o'clock. What happens if they come at night? And they probably will come at night, these bombers. We have got to be ready to do the shooting. And she said, well, what happens if I could look after the elephant for 24 hours a day? And the director said, well, what do you mean? She said, well, I could take it home. And the director said, what do you mean? You could really look after it. It could be there. And if you've got somewhere safe, she said, yeah, I've got a garden with a brick wall all around, not a problem. And the true story is, and it's a true story, this elephant and this, uh, this lady walked back from the zoo to her home every day in Belfast, and she shut it in her back garden and fed it and looked after it. I thought that was the most beautiful story. And you're probably thinking, yeah, 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 it can't be true. Look it up on Google. Look it up on, see, look at Belfast, Blitz, elephant, and what will come up is a black and white photograph of this lady and her elephant in her back garden 
in the Second World War. So I thought, you've got to write that story. So I called it Elephant in the Garden. And I wrote another story called Running Wild, which is my version um, of a wonderful story uh, which Rudyard Kipling wrote um, called The Jungle Book, about a boy in a forest. And I've always wanted to write a story about a boy in a forest. But it has to be today, today, today. And I came across this beautiful story, really beautiful story, which happened in the saddest, saddest of times uh, during the tsunami of 2004, when a little boy was riding along the beach just as the tsunami came in, and the elephant felt the tsunami come in, this big, big wave, saw the sea being sucked away, and saw all the little children running out to pick up the fish from the sand. And the elephant thought, I'm not staying here, I'm not staying here. And with the boy on his back, turned and charged up into the forest and into the hills and saved the life of the boy. And I thought, that's so wonderful. It's the best story, the only good story to come out of the tsunami as far as I was concerned. And I got my boy into the jungle on an elephant. That's how it works, I adore elephants. Oh.